Well, hello there, Mark Risen Hopkins here, uh, coming at you once again from Google I/O 2013. I am uh, I'm here with uh, the guys from MapR. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, a lot of interesting things that from both this event and last year's event, because last year's event was so so awesome. We're still talking about it, uh, and uh, some 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 new things that uh, uh, that are kind of in the in the cloud wars space uh, broadly about Google Compute Engine, uh, which which they are a participant in. Uh, as well, so let's just start off. Uh, last year at Google I/O, at this event, you did the uh, it's a, this amazing uh, demo in which you demonstrated the difference in cost uh, between deploying on Gridiron uh, or uh, for I'm sorry, I should say for a MapReduce operation on, on doing on uh, uh, bare metal versus uh, using Google Compute Engine, and the, the the difference in cost was amazing, very stunning, made lots of headlines. So. Let's, let's refresh people's memory on that and then we'll, we'll move on to what's coming up this year. Yeah, so one of the things that we showed last year um, at Google I.O. was actually our ability to, to leverage Google Compute Engine in Google's cloud. And what we were able to demonstrate last year was the ability to sort a terabyte worth of data and how fast you could sort one terabyte worth of data. The numbers were astonishing. We were able to break the, the existing world record um, that was actually there. We were able to crush that record by doing it, I think with a, a third less cores, you know, half half the CPUs that are actually needed, it was an, it was an amazing achievement number for us. And really, when you looked at the cost, I think it was like three to six million dollars it would have cost you to do it on, on real equipment. And I think we got it down below twenty dollars mm -hmm. to go ahead and do that processing. And so it was a pretty amazing. It was a really big buzz as we were really launching and kind of getting Compute Engine out out in a limited preview um, and, and getting customers on it. Yeah. So. Um, and this year, uh, you're, you're kind of demonstrating some stuff with a client of yours named Rap. Uh, very interesting, you've got the demo running behind you, a real-time live demo. Uh, so, uh, talk about what you're doing there, or what you, what you and Rap are doing there, How, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, it's actually very cool to kind of see the little tag clouds form uh, in real time there. So, so, what is it, what are we looking at here? So really what you're taking a look at is real-time data or, or, or stream processing of the data. <laughs> we were looking at it for the Mac, the MacBook uh, timed out there. Well, we'll talk about it for just a second while we wait for the, the computer to come back. Is we're doing real-time processing of the data. So taking real-time frame from actually a gaming application. And what it's doing is it's pulling in user information. What are the actual users doing across the data? Who are the most active users on the game? And what it's pairing it to is what the actual user is doing. And so it's an actual online game where there's, you know, people are making moves, you know, getting weapons, et cetera. And what you're able to take from this data is, you know, as a developer, you know, am I seeing errors? Am I seeing lots of logouts of a user? Maybe I have an issue with my gaming application, or maybe there's a monetization play. Maybe I want to offer them um, a new weapon or, or, or something to use as part of the game to kind of per entice them to actually use something. So be, be able to find like gaming pain points in real time. Gaming pain points in real time and what they're actually doing. So it's a real time demo as we're really starting to see the shift as, from a Hadoop standpoint as Hadoop's really kind of been regulated to more batch-based processing. It's now moving more towards real-time and stream-based analysis, and this is one of the demos that we've done to kind of show what we're doing there. Right. So, um, it's, it's, very, it's very interesting. Uh, maybe we'll get some, uh, get some B-roll here in a second uh, of that and, and splice it in, but I also want to talk about, and this is a big topic right now kind of in the blogosphere. You know, everyone likes to use the word cloud wars. Uh, and uh, you guys have a foot in, in a lot of different worlds, different clouds, uh, obviously with Google Compute Engine. Mm -hmm. uh, of course you work with the, uh, the other clouds as well. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about your perspective because uh, uh, is, first of all, is it a war or is it not? Is it, is it a war or is it just, uh, just di uh, new supercomputers coming online at different speeds? Yeah, I, I think it's really more of the second. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's a war and really as you look at it, the space is huge, right? There, there's, it's, it's really, in some respects, really greenfield in a lot of cases. So I'm not sure if it's really kind of hand-to-hand -hand battle. It's really kind of out there. Who can get in front of the, uh, the most customers fast enough? There's some cu customers that are going to prefer Google, Google's cloud that are using storage, BigQuery, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And they're going to prefer other clouds. And I think it's really, you know, for, for the cloud providers that can provide the most dynamic services and the most sticky services, um, to their end users are, are going to want to capture the customers. And I, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to find a de facto winner and loser, but I think really who wins in this is actually the consumer um, or the business who's actually getting these services, because as, as more and more competitors come into this space and there's more and more providers, the cost of those services actually come down over time. So it's only going to be a benefit to both the consumer and the business. 
So, uh, Wikibon analyst, uh, chief analyst uh, Dave Vellante likes to use the, the phrase horses for courses uh, to uh, kind of describe a lot of different things in storage and enterprise. And uh, I think what I'm personally gathering, and maybe you can tell me if you agree or disagree, uh, from, from talking to uh, different partners within the Google ecosystem is that there are certain places where like Amazon is far at he head and shoulders above where Google Compute Engine is, uh, specifically like in areas of maybe like uh, video processing in the cloud or, or, or kind of specialized tasks where they've just had, Amazon's got a lead, right? They've been around doing it longer and offering it as a service. Uh, and then there's other places where, uh, you know, Google has focused on, you know, hyperscale for, for, for uh, uh, web application, mm -hmm. mapping, MapReduce, obviously a pioneer in that space too. So um, I guess the question I have for you would be, so how do, how do you feel BigQuery stacks up uh, against the competition in, in the other hyperscale players? Is it, is it a head and shoulders winner? Is it a, uh, is it a comparable like feature set for feature set? Where, where is it in, in kind of the, the hierarchy or the ecosystem? You know, you know, I think it's more of an end user question. I mean, as, as a partner, we, we, we understand how to interact with BigQuery, but we don't, I don't think we see it from that standpoint. So I'm not sure if we're probably the best to comment on kind of whether BigQuery is heads and tails above the rest, but I think one of the things that we've seen with our customers that are actually using us is, you know, having that end-to-end that in -in data pipeline really matters. So being able to take um, services from like Google App Engine, being able to do log file analysis, leveraging MapReduce to go ahead and do that, and to have that you know, being processed from BigQuery I think makes a lot of sense. And I think in other clouds that have similar type services, you know, providing those you know, high-end services or enriched services to your, to your end users really, really matter. So I, I don't know if one's a de facto leader or one's head, heads and tails above the rest. I think some of it also depends on the customer use case right. and what they're using and where their data is, right? One of the things is, is part of it is your data your data lives in the cloud and, and so some of it could just be where your data lives at the moment yeah. and wh who's providing you the services that you right. need. And, and where's which which you know who, who's your neighbors right which which cloud is your neighbor's data in and so um, the so last question because uh, we're, we're running out of time but I do want to ask I've got this friend of mine uh, I, I go to every once in a while he he works for a very large bank that many of us use I won't say the name because he doesn't like it when I do that on on, on air uh, but uh, I talked to him, because uh, he's getting into Hadoop, they're, they're, they've been dabbling with big data uh, for a number of years, but being a large bank, they've got, of course, restrictions and red tape internally. Um, but, uh, you know, I showed him you know, the announcement from last year. Look at how much money, because they're building their own, like, their own Hadoop servers in-house. I'm like, you know, uh, look at this thing. You know, you could save millions of bucks. Like, but, you know, it comes down to security, security, security. And being that the, the public cloud is a nascent field, uh, how do you see the progression for financial sector? Uh, is that, you know, the, their adoption is obviously going to be much slower than perhaps other sectors of, uh, you know, the enterprise. Um, where, where are we in that? Are, is, is that particular very large bank alone in that? Are the other banks kind of coming along more quickly or is that going to, the, the whole sector going to lag? Well, I think overall security needs to be addressed and I think that's one of the things that kind of goes back on the shoulders for the big cloud providers be it Google or any other cloud providers, security's got to be addressed. And especially when you look at financial services or healthcare organizations with HIPAA and PII information, um, I, I think those are definitely going to be addressed. And I think one, there's going to be two ways in which those are addressed. One is they're going to spit up specialized clouds, maybe for financial services like you know, Fiserv clouds, et cetera, same, same the way that some of the cloud providers do for the government. Or they may actually have to just put in strict regulations across all of their cloud-based properties and say, come all, come all, but it's going to be super secure. So I, re I really kind of see that, you know, playing in strongly with the cloud providers. Um, I, th I think it's a question of kind of where we are in, in that adoption curve for those folks. I still, I still think we're early, but for a lot of these new technologies like Hadoop, we're still early in that process, but we're starting to see a lot of interest because having large amounts of data and, be able to, and to be able to have unlimited or seem, seemingly unlimited processing power to process that data at fractions of the cost, I think could be huge over time. Right, the, the power is clear, uh, and, and, and for my friend and his organization, the, the hurdle is simply just getting past these, these uh, 1990s style bureaucratic regulations about mm -hmm. you know, what you can use and what is considered secure. So um, I, I, would, I would tend to agree from, from my experience in, uh, with, with your assessment. It's just one of those things that's going to have to have to come along, so Absolutely. yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I appreciate your time. I
There you go. I appreciate your time, and uh, we're going to be uh, bringing you more and more uh, coverage from the floor of Google I.O. 2013. Stay with us, and we'll be back soon.